New Mississippi Valley State safety Aaron Webb joins the show, and we dive into who he is as not only a football player, but then also as a person. Oh, yeah, it's Locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are Locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Going on, family. Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one. Daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And remember... Just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusive starts with an S and ends with an S. But everything about today's episode from start to finish is about Aaron Webb, the new Mississippi Valley State safety. He transfers in from University of Tennessee at Martin. We break down not only what he can provide to Valley on the field, but then also his love of supervillains, his love of the Chucky doll and in some of the scary mo movie leads like Freddy. And we rank them. This is a great interview. And we cap it off because he's a St. Louis native. And we break down how the city has influenced him as both a player and as a person. This was thoroughly entertaining to do, and I truly believe that it will be thoroughly entertaining to watch. But without further ado, let's break down Aaron Webb and why he came to Valley. Okay, Aaron, so I know that you've been in the process of recruitment for a while, but then you got the Mississippi Valley State offer, and then a week later you committed. What was it about the school that led to you saying, all I need is a week once this offer comes in, and I know this is home now? Man, um, I had a, to be honest, Coach Thompson and Coach Wade did a phenomenal job of just recruiting me. Um, I would say they made it feel like a real, a real family environment. And already, again, just to throw it out there and be real, just to support the African American culture um, where I come from, I think they did a good job. And then going down there, obviously, it's not the, the richest stuff you don't have the nicest things um but for me it's not about that it's for me where can i go to thrive and where am i wanted and needed um and they made a good job of that it made me feel good um about that so that's what made me really commit and be all in and just with the overall goal um, i'm an underdog so i feel like mississippi valley is a, a real underdog in the sweat so i just want to come in and dominate for them guys and myself you know, it's funny that you say that because I, w I went to Texas Southern, right? And I'll be honest, for pretty much my whole time at TSU, it was us and Valley at the bottom. It was <laughs> it was at the point where I was like, you know what, we might get Valley. You know, yeah. we didn't get Valley. Like, I don't know if we're going to win this year. But I say that to say, like, yeah, they are an underdog. They are a team who a lot of people look at as we're going to get by. It might not be an easy win, but we're going to get by Valley. But TSU has started to win last year and they kind of had an uptick so it is possible of course what do you feel like is needed to to take this this valley program from being the team that people are looking down at to being the one they're looking eye to eye and maybe even looking up to by the time you leave uh, i just feel like the they've already started to make the changes i just bring in more winners um because mm -hmm. way play that valley um because way knows what it takes to win bringing in just a new staff, just coaches who care. Cause the thing is the big, biggest misconception. It was already a lot of talent at Valley. Um, they just needed a coaching staff and, and other people to come in who really supported them and are making the, the necessary changes around them. And also bringing in pieces like myself. Um, we got another, um, a good safety from Georgia state, Jacquez, and then a linebacker that just committed. Like it's a lot of good pieces that are coming along and, people to just come in who have a winning background, but also are selfless too, as well. Um, we all got one common goal. So egos get put to the side 
and we doing whatever it takes to win. That's all we care about is winning. In the word, you probably said more than anything else in there is win, winning, win. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's important because I firmly believe that a large part about winning is knowing how to win. Like you see teams <laughs> who once they know how to win, it's consistent and yeah. they continue to keep it going. And you were a part of two OVC championships at UT Martin. What do you feel like you learned from being in a championship culture that you can now translate to Valley? Just, again, like I said, being selfless and understanding that everybody can't be the star player or Mm -hmm. sometimes your blessing is to root on others. Um, It's just that simple or because the difference is, like I said the last time, like the difference is, it's really the same thing in terms of the talent, it's no different. The talent at UT Martin that I had, we won the two championships. You can look on a roster on paper in Valley and see that they had that same intangible, same everything, but it's just the coaches and how much they invest in you and letting it be a player led program. That's the most important thing being a player led program and being able to dominate. Cause it, it wasn't easy. A lot of people think it was easy going back to back. It was hard. You had to be consistent, but you know, once you get the blueprint, it's contagious. So that's the standard. So right now we, I'm just working on trying to come in there immediately and, and, and change the narrative. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. And if the, if people want to know what you look like on the field, your comparison for yourself is kind of the Buddha Baker, mm-hmm. Tyron Matthew. Those are two all pro caliber players. How have you looked at them to help shape your own game on the field? Um, just really with through the, the, god-given gifts that i was given i really watched them and just their mannerisms um just how they carry themselves they take it a little bit more serious that's why they've been able to be more successful so even off the field just what type of guys they are um tyron matthew gives back to the community the same as buddha baker so just overall just being a good person and having strong faith in god um, it takes you a long way um, more than any of the athletic stuff can so i really just soak in anything I can. I watch interviews. I watch film studies. Um, just a lot and over different NFL players as well. And you were on with Blue Bloods, friend of the show, right? That's my mm-hmm. guy. Um, yeah. And you said that you're ready to beat a man. Mm-hmm. You, when you talk about your, your decision to transfer from UT Martin, you said you're ready to be the man. What, what does that mean to you mm-hmm. to step into a program and then be one of the guys? Mm-hmm. To lead by example, and to actually lead by example and just be a firm man of action. There's not too many words. Like I know um, I do interviews to shine light, but this is, this is really, I feel like it's a calling because going to HBCU is very big. Um, and I wish it was more so normal to where, you know, sometimes the coaches, the coaches come to HBCUs, they don't get glorified for it. I feel like it should just be something common, especially with people of our culture and our skin color. I just feel like it's important to put on for the black community. And when I say it's my time, it's no, it's not necessarily being selfish. It's just more so it's my turn to finally lead other people who haven't won or anybody who feel like they aren't enough. Um, like we can win too. Like the Valley, this is not Rudy Pool, you know, like, you yeah. know, you've been there. So that's just kind of what my intentions are. And I need you to clear something up for me. It's not about Valley in, in there. Mm-hmm. It's about your own eligibility. So I know you went the JUCO route. You did mm-hmm. two years at UT Martin. But I've seen you said you have two to three years of eligibility. Mm-hmm. Can you just clear clear that up? Because you Yeah, know, I really, um yeah. Um, really, I had to figure that out because I didn't know. So I just said two to three for purposes of recruitment. Um, mm-hmm. But I have two years left to clear two that years. up. Um, okay. Two years. Two years. And that's really all you need. And that's a lot of time to dominate and impact the program and just the culture and just the environment. Well, we, we've talked about Valley. Like I told you before, man, we're going to get into you as the person. Mm-hmm. I want to have a little bit of fun. I want to loosen up. We take the pads <laughs> off. Let's see who Aaron, Aaron Webb, the human is. Yeah. And I'm going to start off with an interesting choice <laughs> in how you decided to announce your commitment to Mississippi Valley State, because I found that very interesting he pulled out a Chucky doll. So we'll get into that as we continue with Locked yeah. on HBCU.
Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and FanDuel is the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. And I know many people have their eyes on the football season already. Maybe it's because I'm a football fanatic, but there's many people like me, and you might be just like me. And if that's the case, you can put your money down on the NFL futures, divisional, conference, Super Bowl, your favorite players over unders on receiving yards, touchdowns, passing, right, rushing yards, all of those things are already up on FanDuel. And that's the beautiful part. It's like this thing that never really ends. As soon as the season is over, we're on to next year. and We're already on to predicting what's going to happen in 2023. But maybe you want a little bit more in immediate return. And I get that. Well, Wimbledon starts this Monday. Yeah, Monday morning. So you want to bet down, uh, put some money down on Wimbledon. The NML, MLB is still going on. You can put some money down on that. All of these things are still going on. So if you want futures in the NBA, the NFL, and things like that, the WNBA is still going on right now if you need another immediate return. We have futures and we have immediate. You just got to go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every moment more. And as we continue ro rolling with today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day. Every day we have Aaron Webb, new defensive back from Mississippi Valley State. And the way that you announced that you were coming to Valley, you popped out with a Chucky dog. What is the story behind the Chucky dog at the at the announcement photo? I just I don't know how this happened. I ain't never seen this before. So enlighten me. Um, just. Well, me, like, if anybody who knows me, they know I love, like, villains. Um, okay. I love, like, the Joker. Like, that's what my name is, like, Baby Joker. Um, so, when I seen Chucky, it was actually Coach Anderson's idea, um, the running backs coach at Valley. He showed me, and as soon as I seen it, I said, oh, yeah, that's perfect. And with me, it just it just went well with recruitment. It was excitement. They was excited. You can tell that it was just a, a friendly environment. It was fun. So, that was the story behind that. That was dope to me. So are you a big Chucky guy? I know you love villains in general, but mm -hmm. it seemed like the Chucky doll just happened to be there and it was a spur of the moment. But are you yourself a big Chucky guy? Like, actually, yes. And a lot of people didn't know that, but actually, yes. So that's why when I seen it, I instantly grabbed it. I, it pretty much was in a lot of other photos I just didn't post, but mm -hmm. um, yes, I am. So being a journalist, I am. When I see the Chucky photo, I've never watched Chucky. I've never seen Child's Play, right? Like, yeah. I'm one of them guys who barely even know that Child's Play is the name of the movie. Like, yeah. to me, that's just, that's Chucky. You know, yeah. it's like Kool-Aid. I don't know the flavors of Kool-Aid, but I know the, I know the, the name. That's right. color. I, right. I got that, right? So that's Chucky. But like the journalist that I am, I said, you know what? Let's go ahead and watch Child Play 1. Solid. Solid. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I am personally a Scream guy. Mm. We're talking about scary movies. How big in the scary movies are you? If you're, if you like them a lot, I'm gonna ask you to rank some of these head of the of the scary movie franchises for me um i'm big into i like scary movies. i always like that type of stuff okay i got them i got okay let's see i have four i'm i ain't never watched friday the 13th either so i ain't got jason mm. on the list that's 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 not on my list and maybe you you like them you can see where you mm. put them in but we got chucky ghostface freddy krueger michael myers rank these four scary movie leads for me well I think the best, my favorite is uh, Michael Myers. So okay, I do like Michael Myers. And who you say after that? Um, Fred, did you play Freddy in there? Freddy, Ghostface, and Chucky. Those are the next three. Mm, that's hard, but Freddy, Freddy would probably be second to me. Um, okay, and then I would say Chucky, and then Ghostface. Dang, man, that's my boy. I like Ghostface because it's somebody different every time. That's that's why yeah, I, you know, I can't know? believe you didn't put Jason in there, but. Okay, where would Jason go? Because I just never watched Friday the 13th. To so me, I didn't I didn't rank it. To me, Friday the 13th, but it's also I think Jason and Freddie goes together. Cause they had that that movie that was kind of dope because it's kind of like Freddie used Jason to to steer fear until he became stronger and then Jason came. So it's kind of like it's kind of hard, but I would probably put Jason up there, probably right behind Michael Myers. But Michael Myers has always been okay. Like Halloween has always been the go to for me. Yeah, that last Halloween was good. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. To I like the first and uh, this latest trilogy. I like the first one and the third one a lot. The second one, it was yeah, okay. One, it's cool. Sometimes it's the they don't know what to do with the storyline because it's been so many. Because if you be real, it's like how do Michael Myers keep coming back? Like, because nobody. And that's why I like Ghostface because he doesn't. 
It's just like, a new they never <laughs> classified Michael Myers being like some type of immortal. Heck, he was just a human who happened to have. So I don't know why he kept. I, I don't know. I think they made that storyline good though. But now they did, bro. Now I, I I do love. I've I've gained a little bit more appreciation yeah. for scary movies in the sense of I just didn't watch them when I was younger because I was like, bro, this isn't scary to me. Yeah, and it's still not. But it's it's. I don't know. It's it's quality content. Yeah, it's and I don't art. know how to I mean, explain it's, it. it. It's an art, then they didn't took over. It's just an art to me. So we looking at villain. Let's keep let's keep this going. Let's keep mm -hmm. the villain route going, right? Yeah. We got Joker. I think he's probably the guy. Yeah. But then after that, if we go in just I guess we'll mm -hmm. keep it in comics. We'll keep it in comic books. Who's two? Who's two through five? If we rank in your five favorite villains, Joker's one. What's the rest of them? Um, to me, it's so many because some of them aren't really. You got to shoot out some names. Um, we got Green Goblin. We got Kingpin. We got Loki. We got Thanos. Mm, uh, got think, Kane, Lex Luthor. Um, yeah. Um, I like Reverse Flash a lot because I'm a Flash guy from the yeah, TV show. Flash so I, I'm trying to I'm trying to rattle some off of there because it is a lot of villains to pick from, and it's probably unfair for me to just be like, "Hey, name five. But I, I would say, okay, Joker's always Magneto. Be, Magneto. Yeah. I can't not mention Magneto. Facts. I would say Joker, obviously the one. Um, I would say Thanos second. Okay. Because to me, he was unbeatable. Then I would mm -hmm. probably put, ooh, I like Green Goblin. Would you count? I almost wanted to say Silver Surfer from Fantastic Four, but I don't know if he really was a a villain or even in the comments for real but i'm trying in that movie they i feel like could have been a long time since i watched that movie yeah they, i feel they like they positioned him as villain. a villain like yeah like he um okay i would just throw silver Sir, and then five it's so many um i'm trying to think of the name the name that keep coming to me is killmonger i ain't gonna lie just from from a movie standpoint, cause I love I love the rendition of, of Killmonger that Michael B. Jordan did. Like almost, that, was, that, that was amazing. You know what I was finished? I was almost gonna name somebody from Mortal Kombat. Do it. <laughs> um, Do I it. would say, um, yeah, probably. I would probably say Sub Zero, especially the way they had him in that movie of how hard he was and just everything he could do. Sub Zero for sure. Sub Zero would actually go second. Yeah, Sub Zero. I, listen, I, I know people are like man. I came in to see. Aaron Webb and know what he was gonna do. Listen, this is who Aaron Webb is. Aaron right. Webb is a villain loving, scary movie loving person who just so happens to play defensive back and catch interceptions. <laughs> but but it, this is a real guy. This is the right. real guy. This is this is who it is. You're getting to know who Aaron Webb is, and a part of knowing who Aaron Webb is is understanding where he comes from. So we're gonna break down the city of St. Louis and the influence that it's had on him as a person. And as a football player, because, yes, we are still going to talk football as we continue with Locked on HBCU. And as we continue rolling with today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day every day, making it all the way to segment three with me and Aaron, man. We are... We didn't have a lot of fun talking about these villains, talking about the, these these scary movie leads and whatnot. But now we're going to get into some of the things that are at his core, some of the baseline, and that is the city of St. Louis. And I feel like if you're looking at every region, they have something that's distinct, whether it's swagger, wardrobe, style of play, something. What is the trademark of St. Louis high school football? Mm. The trademark? Like, what's the exact, like, what do you... What you mean by that? Like, like what what makes them different than mm, everywhere else? Like, okay. like, like if you see somebody in Nebraska, you and you personally being somebody who's grew up in it, you like they play ball in St. Louis. I can tell something about it. Okay, um, I would just say how competitive we are, um, mm -hmm. and just we go getters, like we opportunists. So we don't care if we won sixty soaking wet. We go in there at the end if we got to to make a play. No. So like. That's just kind of 
the the attitude we got about us and you could tell we like to fly around and we also play like it's our last because we really don't know um that's just how we are that's how i can tell when somebody is has really can play ball and from the same city it's just it's an aura about you so if somebody looking at you without you know being that guy who's just gonna go line up at dn if somebody was like how has the city of st louis influenced Aaron Webb and how he views the game of football, what would you say? I would say City of St. Louis, it made me gracious. Like, it made me very grateful because a lot of people don't make it out of St. Louis just in terms of where they come from, the decisions they made, people that was around, you know. um, A lot of people don't know. My favorite player in high school was, like, Jeff Thomas, he played at East St. Louis High School, and he was one of the best in the country. I mean, he had a little – he was on that little 69 blocks. Um, and just other people, like, it's a lot of different coaches as well that's around that played the game. Um, you got Coach Sunkett at East St. Louis High School. You got Coach BG, Cardinal River. You got Coach Smith, Pattonville at my school. It's just a lot of different people that reached out to me when I was young. And kind of I kind of got the blueprint. So I just followed that blueprint, got myself around the right people, and just have strong faith in God and, and you know, I'm here today. So and still more work to do. Yeah. And off of the football field, who are you? Like, like, yeah, yeah we didn't, we didn't got into all of the things and how you view the game, but just from an everyday standpoint, whether you're on campus, whether you walking <laughs> through the mall, whether you driving your car, like how has the city molded you as a human being? Um, I would say it's, it's really molded me into being, um, and that's funny to say that just going through the mall, like I'm just a, a very, I'm a very energetic person as well. Like I like to play around, um, yeah. I'm goofy. Um, and I like different stuff like that. Like, man, people don't even know I watch ASMR. I don't even know you, if you know what that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's different things. Like I, I really love art and just, I respect it from so many different avenues. There's so many different things. I like to paint. I like people who paint, um, it just really opened my mind into like, I would say, um, I'm trying to think of the right words. Um, it just comes back to just being grateful and understanding that you don't, you shouldn't take life for granted. So I'm into a lot of different things other than football. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that. And I've seen you say like, after, after ball, right? You would love to be a coach or a broadcaster, mm-hmm. but if you just took sports and athletics out of it all together and you mm-hmm. said, you know what, I it's not in my future, what are you doing? Like, what is the next profession for you? Um, doing something with my fraternity and just um, me being an alpha, I feel like we stand on business. Um, yeah. Coming from the Southside chapter from UT Martin, um, those guys did a phenomenal job um, of just showing me the blueprint as well. And so I would say just being a businessman and investing, having stocks, um, along with helping other people and just pitching in and just really being uh, an an influencer. Um, So that's what I would say. Man, look, I'll tell you this, though. I feel like this, now that second segment, I knew we were going to get on certain things. Like I knew we were going to talk about Chucky, but I wasn't sure where it was going to go. I wasn't sure how we were going to go with the, the city of St. Louis talk. I knew the, the football was going to be what the football was from mm-hmm. just talking to you and, and before and before the show and also before we even got on camera. Mm-hmm. Man, this was a lot of fun. I appreciated it. I hope that we were able to paint a picture of who Aaron Webb is when he takes off yeah. his shoulder pads, when he takes off his helmet. And I hope that we made somebody out there more interested in finding out who you are as a person the way that I now feel more interested in finding mm-hmm. out who you are as a person. But thank you for coming on the show. You. Blessing me with the appearance, man, because this has been a lot of fun and I look forward to talking in the future. Mm-hmm. But there's one thing I need from you before I let you go today. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to see you in a few, but one thing today. I need you to, every, every episode I start off with a play my music and all I need is for you to let one out. You got to, you got some stiff competition. I'll let you know that. So Ty, Martavius, they didn't did it. So I need you to put a little passion in there and let it play my music out before we leave, man. All right, let's get it. <laughs> play my music. There we go. Now we're going to put y'all three together and we're going to see who they say 
is the top person from the month of June, but I really do appreciate it, man. I don't say these things just so we can have a nice way to leave. Yeah. I say it because I mean it, man. This was a great interview, and I appreciate, appreciate you coming you, on. And I appreciate you for tuning in and listening. So until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care. Stay blessed. Peace.